Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. One of my current projects involves Mary Surratt, who, as you students of the Civil War know, was one of the conspirators charged with the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. She was hanged for her crime. The man who arrested her is a captain. His name is Richard Warren Smith, and he showed up at her house, which is pictured here, on April 17th, 1865, just a few days after the assassination. Got a photograph of her here to show you. And Captain Smith went to the house and served the arrest warrant in a June day in 1867, Smith participated in the trial. He was a witness and shared his testimony about the arrest of Mary Surratt. And also on that same uh, event, that same moment, soon after her arrest, he also arrested Lewis Payne, who is also Lewis Powell. His real name is Lewis Powell. I want to read the eyewitness testimony to you because it's so vivid and so interesting and so meticulous in its detail. Captain Smith really goes in depth in describing exactly what happened. So let me read a couple of passages just to give you a sense of what it must have been like in the courtroom in this June day in 1867, listening to Captain Smith give his testimony. So here we go. Question. Will you state whether you were one of the officers who went to Mrs. Surratt's after the assassination? Answer. I had command of the party. Question. Tell us what day of the week and on what day of the month you made the arrest. Answer. It was Monday, the 17th day of April. Question. Then it was the next Monday after the assassination. Answer from Smith. Three days after the assassination. Question. Did you arrest Payne, a.k.a. Powell, at the same time and in the same house? Answer. At the same time and in the same house. Question. Describe to the jury your approach to the house, what occurred, who you saw, and give a description of the arrest of Payne and Mrs. Surratt. Answer. I received orders from General Augur. It's Christopher Columbus Augur, who's head of the Department of Washington, to go to Mrs. Surratt's house and arrest her and any suspicious personages I might find there. I had a party of three men detailed to go with me. Question. Who went with you? Answer. A man by the name of Weimerskirch, a man by the name of Roche, and Eli DeVoe. We went down 8th Street till we got between 5th and 6th, or 6th and 7th, I forget which, to 541 H Street. On approaching the house, I posted the men. I sent one man into the backyard, directing him not to allow anyone to pass out, placed one at the basement door, and took one up the steps. Question. How did you get your man into the backyard? Answer. There was a gate entrance on the side of the house on the right-hand side going down. Question. Describe the front entrance to the house. Answer. It was by high door steps from the street. Question. Was the outside entrance into the basement or the second story? Answer. There was an entrance both to the basement and the second story. Question. Into which did the steps lead? Answer. The steps led to the second story. By the way, you can get a sense of that right here in the photograph. Question. Which did you enter? Answer. I entered by the steps, the second story, leaving a man outside to prevent any escape that way. Question. Describe what you saw after you got up the steps. Answer. Before ringing the bell, I leaned over and looked through a blind into the parlor and discovered four females sitting close together, evidently in close conversation. 
From what occurred, I should judge they were anxiously expecting someone. They were turning and listening from time to time as if waiting for somebody to come. I then rang the bell. Somebody came to the window and whispered, is that you, Kirby? Question, tell how. Answer, they whispered in a low voice, is that you, Kirby? I said, no, it is not Kirby, but it is all right. Let me in. She said, all right, and opened the door. I stepped in and said, is this Mrs. Surratt's house? She said, yes. I said, are you Mrs. Surratt? She said, I am the widow of John H. Surratt. I said, and the mother of John H. Surratt Jr.? She said, yes. I then said, madam, I've come to arrest you and all in your house and take you down to General Auger's headquarters for examination. Be kind enough to step in. She stepped into the parlor. There were three parties there. One was lying on the sofa. Said I, who are these ladies? She said, that is Anna Surratt, that is Olivia Jenkins, and that is Honora Fitzpatrick. I said, ladies, you will have to get ready as soon as possible and go with me down to General Augers for examination. Whereupon, Mrs. Surratt commenced wringing her hands and said, oh, mother, to think of being taken down there for such a crime. Mrs. Surratt stepped to her, put her arms around her neck, and whispered something in her ear, and she became quiet. I said to her that I had sent for a carriage and to please get ready as soon as possible that I would send somebody with them down to headquarters. Question, what time was that? Answer, as nearly as I can state, a quarter after 10. Mrs. Surratt said, I will go upstairs and get the ladies' things. I said, I advise you to get warm wrappings as it is a damp, drizzly night. She said, I will go right upstairs. I said, excuse me, madam, this house is suspected. I will accompany you upstairs. I told DeVoe to remain in the room and see that no papers were destroyed and that no communication passed between the ladies. I went upstairs with Mrs. Surratt. She obtained clothing for the ladies to go to headquarters. In the meantime, two other detectives had reported, one by the name of Morgan and another by the name of Sampson. I sent Sampson downstairs to take charge of the servants and waited for the carriage. Mrs. Surratt said to me, by your leave, sir, I would like to kneel down and say my prayers to ask the blessing of God upon me as I do upon all my actions. I told her, certainly, I'd never interfered with any such purpose. She knelt down in the parlor and prayed. In the meantime, I heard steps coming up the front steps. Weimer, Skirch, and Morgan were in the upper part of the house with me. I told them to go behind the door and that when they rung or knocked to open the door and let them step in, whoever it was, and I would meet them in the hall, I, thinking at the time, it was Kirby that I was going to trap. I stepped into the parlor and myself face to face with Payne. Payne was standing on the threshold of the door with a pickaxe over his shoulder. I stepped out and met him. He said, I guess I have mistaken this house. And I said, you have not. He said, is this Mrs. Surratt's house? And I said, yes. He seemed to hesitate. I drew my revolver and cocked it and said, step in. He stepped in immediately. I said, lay down that pickaxe. He laid it down and put it in the corner. I took him to the back part of the hall and set two men to stand guard over him. We then commenced questioning him and examining him. I asked him where he had been. He said he had been working on the railroad and canal, that he had been working in different parts of the city. I asked him how long he had been there. He said a week or 10 days. I asked him if he had any papers with him. He said he had a pass, which he took out and handed to one of the officers, who passed it to me. I looked at it and found it to be an oath of amnesty, or an oath in which he bound himself not to go south to the Potomac, I think. I asked Payne what he had been doing. He said he was a laboring man. I asked him where he lived. He said he could not tell. 
I asked him whether it was east, west, north, or south. He said he could not tell me where he lived. I asked him what he came to Mrs. Surratt's for that hour of night. It was then verging towards 11 o'clock. He said he came to get instructions about digging a ditch in the backyard. I asked him what he came at that hour for to get instructions about digging a ditch. He said he didn't know. He was passing along. I asked him when he met Mrs. Surratt. He said he met her this morning and agreed to dig a ditch for her and that he wanted instructions to go to work the next morning. I then stepped to the parlor door and said, Mrs. Surratt, will you be kind enough to step here for a minute? Said I. Do you know this man? Did you hire him to dig a ditch for you? She raised both her hands and said, Before God, I do not know this man. I have never seen him. I did not hire him to dig a ditch. Shortly after that, a carriage reported, and Mrs. Surratt and the three ladies were sent to General Augur's headquarters. A little while after, Payne also was sent there in another carriage. Both carriages went in charge of detectives. So there you have it. A little bit of the testimony on June June day in 1867, the trial of Mary Surratt, which eventually ended in a guilty charge in her death by hanging. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.